thank you all for joining us uh, for this AMA. Uh, it's about time we had one. We've had a great time in Singapore and we had, uh, well, we've done so much stuff. Uh, it's been absolutely incredible. And uh, we're glad to be back now at our desks uh, working on Raptorium and uh, making sure the assets is uh, delivered properly. Uh, it was originally going to be just myself, uh, but we have got the baguette nibbler here as well, who has kindly, uh, kindly stepped in. Uh, David is currently off with, he's got a pregnant missus and he, so he's having to deal with the kids and things uh, that his missus would normally deal with. And Charlie's missus is away. Uh, so I say missus and just say wife charlie's wife's away uh so he's looking after the kids at the moment doing all the tea and the, the dinner sorry the dinner uh so that's what charlie's doing so here we have the baguette nibbler can you hear me all right baguette just perfectly wonderfully okay hello folks there's been quite a time and i didn't come to the stream so happy to be there as well happy that whole nudged me today <laughs> So, you didn't have to come on. I just thought you might want it. I was yeah, it's a pleasure. I mean, it's been in some time we didn't discuss with the I I did not discuss with the community, so it's happy time for me. Yeah. So we sent out an anonymous form to the community, uh, so you could send any any old question in, and uh, as usual during our AMAs, doesn't matter what the question is. We will answer every single question uh, in as much depth as we can uh, with no sort of time constraints or anything like that because we don't do the crypto smith streams on an ama stream so the next stream that we will have uh, will be a crypto smith stream although next weekend i will be away i'm taking my wife to uh czech czech czechoslovakia or whatever you want to call it czech republic um just for the weekend so it might not be the case i'll be back on the sunday evening but we'll see possibly just don't know when uh, i'll be back uh in the country like you know uh yes more traveling tube and jar i do like to travel I do like to travel and if and if you can then why not you know what i mean okay uh so i'm gonna just get started with these questions that have come through we haven't planned any answers or anything like that we're just gonna you know we're just gonna see how we get on with it i have no idea what has been sent uh but we've got 28 questions that have come in so i'll just get Maybe. started with the first one uh what would you consider a measure of how successful the adoption of raptorium has been since assets has been released and what mechanisms do the project use to gauge this i think a good way to initially gauge it uh being the assets uh you know utilizes ipfs uh for files and things like that is how many clusters we've got on ipfs uh number of pins sorry so uh that's something to gauge uh, another thing to gauge is how many assets have been created on the network um, and another one uh, would be how many asset transactions there's been uh, so yeah that, that's how I would pos possibly gauge it what would you say is a baguette you want to answer that no 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 because it's it just makes sense so I don't feel like I need to add anything I mean it's I'll ask you for your answer on, it, on every question it's a quanti quantitative way of uh of uh, gauging things and a qualitative way at the same time so it's uh the code are just being up we are just uh, starting pushing things around so yeah oh, i just want to see it explode like anyone <laughs> okay next question is what time scales and targets have, have the team set if any for project adoption e.g. if the project is not adopted as hoped when you all call it a day and move on. Well, we've, we've been doing this project since 
2018. We had a test net that was almost for three years and uh, we started the initial main net, which is a lot different to what we have now in code terms, uh, but that was in February 2021. We're not time constrated. We're not like here uh with a time or a date and then we're going to move on no one's going anywhere we never have done we've always stuck stuck to our ground and we're always constantly uh pushing forward on the project be however fast or however slow it is for the simple reason this is what we enjoy doing so when you're doing something that you enjoy it, it doesn't matter how, how there's no date set on anything you know it's it, it's something that's just it just flows you know it's something that's just the team enjoys like i say uh yeah so we have no plans as such in calling it a day uh and we've got a lot of work still to do uh with transaction decoupling and the vendor platform uh business integrations and you know uh contracting apache spark with java and python and all that good stuff and this is what we this is what we're here for and why we uh des designed the the goalposts of the project in the way we did because that's the way we see a good pl blockchain to be we get anything i mean there is not a spiracy date on our motivation it's it's like on the two side of things because all of the features need to be delivered because that's something that we need to to do and we just want to do and the second thing is that <clears throat> when you're doing something thinking about the world space just make your motivation never end you know it's like as as paul say as ben Russell said it's like when you're doing something you like you know, you're not going to just don't like it the day after that because you don't have maybe the traction of the recognition that what the people from the community are expecting but you're just pushing forward and doing it because that's the only way you can do it if you start looking at the left looking at the right looking at the back and on the front you just don't move and you just stay where you are and yeah you just move on to something else but that's not happening here what is happening is new code coming every every day nearly and being pushed through then upgrade being done new developer things like it's 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 a non-flowing stream of what we was expecting and put on the roadmap so it's i mean i don't know why it would change <laughs> neither tomorrow neither in a year you know guys <laughs> yeah okay uh next question we have is how does the team intend to keep evolving the project in future to adapt it to change in use cases against other blockchain projects and is a new roadmap being worked on after assets release to see what's next on the horizon um in terms of the roadmap we've intentionally kept it s simple goalposts because that's what that's that's the the big picture anything in between those goalposts is not exactly uh something that we should be putting on a roadmap uh because things can change a lot in between the major goalposts um as we've seen in a lot of different cryptocurrency projects out there i mean if we have another major milestone that we decide to add into the roadmap then we'll add it but for now the things that matter to us are what are on the roadmap so transaction decoupling um vendor platform uh for onboarding and also contracting in apache spa but one thing to consider is like we we're not like um oh what was the first part of the question intend to keep evolving the project in future in future to adapt it to changing use cases against other blockchain projects in in that regard i'll say that we're not uh directly competing uh with other blockchain projects in the regard of um how we've coded the the blockchain 
because we are a lot different out there um, in our aspirations to what others are currently doing. I mean, the general gist of token chains out there are EVM based or Solana based. Uh, and there's nothing else really that comes close to what we're doing. The, I think the problem that we've got right now is um, we need a few more things in place, such as uh, Talon Wallet, the underlying glue, the connectivity between the markets and the chain. And, and, and there's a few different hurdles to get over, like um, the initial, um, like one of you guys, like the first community member to create a token and then list it on an exchange which you can do right now that that is something that's possible i mean you could you could list your token on zegex for example uh you could list your token on coinx um, it's something that is possible um so those initial hurdles need to be overcome uh to inspire others to do so uh people need to make a success out of something that they've utilized on the chain and i know that there's a lot of community members out there that are building really cool things right now and it's just a matter of time until those come to fruition and uh you know mancini uh with the talent wallet over there he's got a demonstration next month of of a working wallet uh with with a public trial uh the, the following month so that that's something really exciting and something that we would uh really see value in in furthering uh what we're building you want to add anything to get to that one yeah i would i mean it's you know there's so many different chain right now but most of them are based on the same way of doing things and the same mechanism and i guess it's also why Raptor Realm is doing it the way it is doing it right now. I and mean, it's, we've talked in Singapore with a lot of person, <clears throat> even VCs and, and incubators and stuff like that. I mean, a whole shit ton of it, you know, and, uh, it means they always didn't this first question. Oh, your EVM, oh, your blockchain. So your EVM, no, 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 no. Let's yeah. start again. Let's start the conversation again so we can discuss. We are bootstrap, we take so based, we code entirely the dash code base, so Bitcoin based. <clears throat> and then you can get the discussion rolling and then they get that you're doing something different. You're not trying to be like the other, you're not trying to be like another layer two or whatever blockchain. They're just trying to doing things in a different way to bring the things right. And when you start a conversation like this, you just have to understand that implementing new things just to follow a trend and that it's not many things to do right now. Right now is to be a trailblazer, you know, to do your own trade on the block. And it's what Raptor M is doing. Maybe not as quick as some people would want, but that's, that's not relevant when you're doing something new, you're just doing it the best way you can. So that's when you, you get the interesting part of a conversation, even with ventures capital, because, you know, uh, you will have hundred plus UVM chain, but you will only have one Raptorium out there. And that's what we're doing right now. Thanks, uh, Fabrice. Next question is, are there any developments with the game studio you were talking to a few months back regarding inter in integrating Raptorium into their projects? We showed them the test net. They were impressed with that. Um, obviously, we've been very busy releasing assets. Uh, we've been to Singapore. Uh, we've been back, then readjusting and everything like that. So we need to now go well, I need to now go over to there and, um, you know, show them the the working product on mainnet and help them register their master assets so then they can build underneath. Then it's up to them uh, whenever they want to uh, start building underneath that. So, but yes, that is something 
that's you know going to happen and it's just something that i need to go and sort out just need to get the time to do it um, but it's something i will do absolutely next question is uh, after your visit to singapore for token 2049 how do you think the raptorian project was was received by others you met and based on any feedback you got how do you think its credibility and use case potential stack up against other rival blockchain projects you're competing against I can take this one. say again i can take this one because okay. this is basically what we were talking a little before um well, things I wouldn't even compare blockchain uh, because I think there is no way we can compare with something that doesn't exist uh, or competitors. We have like nothing is made the way Raptorum is made as it is right now because the only thing about <clears throat> getting something out that cover other weakness on 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 another blockchain. That's the case for layer two on on uh, on Ethereum. Basically, they come here to cover weakness that the main layers has. I mean, if if things were done like Raptor Man is being done right now, there wouldn't be any need for layer two. That's just how it is. So, oh, it was received first. It was surprise. People are not used to get someone get bootstrap. How we're doing? And also, you know, David, he initially talked to them and like, like some, some of them, he realized that they were working on EVM and then he just literally put them straight in their place and they're just like gobsmacked because they've, they've built their own big projects over this and David's there reeling off the exploits to them, you know, they don't, just, they just don't know what to say to it. It's just, uh, it's funny to see, you know. We need to see if we carry on, baguette. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. I mean, it's 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 great because it's real. And so, first things is surprise. Then it's respect, respect from the person uh, that count in the industry. I mean, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say any name here, but people that own a lot of stuff in the industry. Uh, shown very great respect to to raptorium work team you know teamwork and it's uh it's amazing to see those kind of people showing respect to a project like us which would be deemed as a little project considering the net worth of those people and the power they have yeah. but it's uh it's how they treat it i mean the the there's those people which are pretty much the most important people in the space we show re showing respect because they know the the work that goes behind it and because they are oj or dinosaur as you would say in the space as well so <clears throat> it's really interesting to see that and and all what we've been told is guys you're doing it the right way you're doing it how it should be done so it's no it's considering competitors Mm, I don't see any potential competitors as it is right now. The way it's being done, sure, potentially, uh, well, as it is right now, assets are, are released on Solana, assets are released on EVM. Yeah, it's it's one thing, but it's not as decentralized as we are. It's not uh, uh, the power is not back to the community. Uh, as it is in the case in Raptorium, and we just work hand in hand with the community as well. I mean, there are a lot of person in the community that contributed to Raptorium as well, uh, as being for translation or issue on the GitHub or whatever. I mean, it's uh, it's how it's done. It's community project. It's built together. That's something that you wouldn't see in, <laughs> in something like I don't know any of the layer two or a lot of other project so now raptorium is well seen uh well uh received as well um and and i guess it's uh it's just a matter of something that everyone can understand when you uh get uh 
50 million to uh, develop your blockchain or when you do it bootstrap well it's not the same kind of work but at the same time you don't have any string to 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 any kind of investments and i think it's as it is right now we are in the best position if we want to to get a boost on what we do meaning that we can enter easily a fund if we want it's just a matter of if we, if we want it or we don't want it i mean of the founders of raptorium want it or doesn't want it so no people know our worth they totally want to involve help and make us great you know i mean greater reach to marketing greater reach to higher uh, output developments but is it a matter for does it does it matter to do it right now wait or don't do it at all it's just how we are trying to do things the best way so that we keep the original vision original development that we've set up you know so don't don't think about competitors because as it is right now i don't see any awesome okay the next question is what was the worst thing about sharing a room with baguette he's snoring or he's farting <laughs> well i think uh <laughs> Paul's no more than me, but seems to fart less. <laughs> uh, I think um, as long as I'm asleep before he is asleep, then everything's fine. Because if I snore, then I don't hear Baguette snoring. Uh, but the problem is, is if I'm asleep first and then Baguette's trying to get to sleep, uh, he was waking me up going whoosh, whoosh, like when <laughs> you were doing that trying to wake me up because you couldn't sleep and he were like sleep on your side just sleep on your side it's ridiculous so yeah i mean i might have snored a little bit but anyway the worst a little thing... bit it's an <laughs> understatement the worst thing are the farts uh, because the room that we were staying in, let's just say it was very cosy and small. Um, and it had no ventilation. There's no windows that you could open or anything like that. So when someone farted in that room, it was lingering for a long time. I mean, you could smell it for a long time. Um, you know, I mean, even just not the farts, if, uh, if Fabrice went went to use the toilet, it was lingering for a considerable considerable amount of time. So, yeah, the farts were the worst thing. Uh, anything you want to add to that, Baguette? No, nothing. About the, the side of the room, we we were nearly cuddling every night because it was so... <laughs> it's crazy, but it, it, it was clean, it was cool, yeah. and it was in the best... Uh, place in singapore so well you you say the best place in singapore you were complaining before we got there saying you know what yeah, have you yeah. done and that and yes basically we ordered the hotel right in the uh red light district of singapore it was just smack bang in the middle you couldn't eat you couldn't get any more center than that where we were so but it turns out that we were in the best place uh, the best restaurants the best you know the best places to have a drink or whatever it was just awesome okay uh next question that we've got uh is you have recently suggested uh a move off discord is a possibility for community engagement in the future what platform would you like to see the community use and why i suggested that as a joke because uh, at the time uh it just been the case that the te telegram founder had decided to start giving ip addresses and phone numbers to the authorities and you know we'd been using telegram for running blockchain projects well i had personally since you know telegram come out in 2014 uh, so the last 10 years basically i mean the raptorian project is run on telegram for the simple reason that it's fully encrypted and uh it's you know it's it's been reliable for a long time uh, but it was just a, 
I was just joking to say that we should uh, move the move the community off Discord because Discord has never been, uh, you know, an encrypted area to converse with your friends and things like that. It's always uh, giving information over to authorities. It always has done so. Yeah, so we were a little bit disappointed with the Telegram that that they started doing that. There are other options out there. Um, but you know what? We don't, we're not like dodgy or anything. We don't do anything illegal on Telegram. So I think we're all right for now. Yeah. I mean, Telegram has its bots and things like that, but it's really good for, for running a project. Hopefully. Uh, okay. The next question is if Kamala Harris wins the election for USA president, do you expect Raptorium and crypto in general? to suffer as a result with tougher regulation expected as she has indicated previously and how would this influence your development moving forwards would it deter you anyway i'll we'll put it this way we've had biden uh, we've still got biden now and he's been rubbish for crypto i think and um, we've carried on with development when we started development we had trump in office uh i will say trump was good for uh the cryptocurrency markets well not even just the cryptocurrency markets it was good for the money markets the stock markets in general um he did a lot of good things people don't like him in certain ways but i think he he's good for he's definitely good for financial markets so i'm hoping uh trump gets in i don't particularly like the guy i think he says some really stupid things sometimes but he's good in other ways i don't think kamala harris is going to be any different really than than biden she's tried to uh she's tried to say that she's all like oh yes we'll definitely consider uh, these digital assets for you know for a better future to compete with the rest of the world she's only saying that because trump was saying it uh so she's copied a lot of what he was saying to try uh, and win a few voters over but, but he's always is a way for development we push through at the same time you know it's yeah uh we just i mean a uh, raptor realm won't slow because it's one or the other I mean, there is a preferable one for markets but the development won't stop whatever the case it is yeah well i mean they can't stop us there's no way they can we're a decentralized project we're all over the world we don't have any borders everything just carries on doesn't matter okay uh now assets have been released what are the most and important and immediate goals for raptorium coming in 2025 and if you had a list of the top key performance metrics what would they be um in 2025 you know we're going to see transaction decoupling uh for the scalability option of the network that we've been working on it's already the development's already started on that which is pretty cool uh so then that would take us to a, a point where we are in you know competition with some of the top token chains out there that are, are evm based or or even rust based as well in terms of scalability uh and then obviously uh we we have started a lot of work with onboarding um, businesses uh through securing their master assets and then uh sort of lighting a fire underneath that and encouraging them and showing them the way to to start utilizing uh what we've been building in their operations so that's something we are pushing forward as well i know that david's got a lot of companies that are you know uh are ready and also a few of them have been started to have started to um you know integrate which is a cool thing uh so yeah and and i would like to see um i'd like to see uh, uh some sort of example uh for the community um in 2025 about where we about what we could do with apache spark so just an example of contracting um that'd be nice to see or even or even some simple contracting tree if you're listening no pressure 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was pressure. It was no, it wasn't no pressure. But do you know what I would like to see? And this is not even in 2025. I think, and I've said it before, I think it would be brilliant to have assets on Stacy. Uh, the tree in the uh, in the team chat. Tree was saying next month uh which well next month is not long away so we'll give him till the end of the month <laughs> but yeah once we get assets on the stacy wallet and people are throwing around in the chat all sorts of complete trash and you know i'm saying trash because most of it's going to be trash they're going to be a uh 99 .99%. <laughs> i mean if, if i can send baguette a fart or a snore i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna send him a thousand of each one every day because i can so that's gonna be fun to do in in the chat and then put a little message next to your asset that you've sent and it'd be good to be able to list your assets in your stacy wallet and all that sort of stuff it's just it opens up so much more uh so much more fun things for the community and uh you should you should you should list a bucket uh, fart yeah on Zegex, you know. yeah and... we get fart on zegex what's the <laughs> listing fee for zegex or is it two and a half k or something Five. Um, well it depends but yeah around that so yeah who knows we might list baguette's fart on on zegex and uh you know it'll go to the fucking moon not financial advice do your own research <laughs> but these things are possible they are they are possible right now we could do that second part of that question is and if you had a list of the top three performance metrics what would they be i think again it's the same as the whole uh we could use the assets performance metrics how many there are how many pins there are on the cluster uh another one would be tps because if we got transaction decoupling in place then tps would be an obvious one uh and then uh, another one would be how many how many businesses uh registered through the vendor platform that'd be another one in your last ama you indicated you fix broken tech in your day job what is the most difficult thing you've had to repair I think um i mean i repair all sorts of things every day people literally knock the door bring them to the house can you fix this please um pretty much anything electronic motherboards tvs monitors laptops pcs tablets anything that you can plug in i've even fixed drones i've fixed boat electronics car electronics anything like that but i think the most difficult thing uh are possibly if there are issues with iphone motherboards uh so they tend to be they tend to be more tightly uh constructed than the android counterparts uh so when you if you're doing like a if they've got a chip issue on the motherboard um you'd have to remove the chip under the microscope uh without damaging the rest of the, the motherboard um and a thing with iphone motherboards as well they usually come in especially the new ones they're now coming three layers uh so when you're focusing heat onto one part of the motherboard you've got the risk of warping the silicon and when you warp the silicon you've just literally screwed someone's phone or whatever you know so you don't want to do that uh, but also, once you remove the chip, reballing is a fine art. So you know, with the stencils, putting all that back on, then and then reflowing the chips back to the motherboard. I think, I, th I think anything like that is uh, is high risk and very difficult to do uh, for 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 most uh, technicians that work on electronics um another one is um trace repair on an iphone motherboard uh that's fairly difficult 
but it's not as difficult as chip repair for the simple reason uh, when you are doing trace repair you're literally focusing the heat on a single pad and then moving to the next one quickly so there's no warping of the motherboard um, whereas with a chip repair it's it's a fine art because the board has to be preheated perfectly has to be maintained and uh, and your your flow of the chip has to be concentrated in a perfect place in order to not damage anything else and there's so many fine components on the motherboard surrounding the chips it's literally you know uh, if you're if you're a hair's length to the left or the right the whole thing is it's damaged so yeah i would say reballing and uh reballing iphone motherboards android ones are a lot more easier I mean, I used to find it really difficult uh, reballing um, APUs and things like that on consoles and graphics cards. Uh, but once I started fixing iPhone motherboards, the uh, those sort of tasks uh, were a lot more easier uh, because fixing smaller things gave me more of a steady hand. I hope that answers your question. Apart from fishing, what do you do to relax and de-stress? I use a, my VR headset. I've got a Quest 3. Uh, I go on that every day. I, I love VR. Ever since VR first came out, um, I've had every single headset, even the, um, you know, even the, the trial ones. Um, I mean, even as a kid as, as well, on the, on the Amiga, there was some you know really janky test headsets and uh i've always been into that sort of thing uh so when so when consumer vr first came out it was just i immediately stopped playing flat games let's put it that way and i don't play flat games anymore uh i just play vr games and, and it's not just VR games. I mean, watching films in, in VR, 3D films in VR is epic. You can literally wrap the film around you and you're almost in it. <laughs> so it's just it's just fantastic. And that's what I enjoy. Um, I also enjoy uh, tinkering with motorbikes. I've got a lot of motorbikes. And I'm building a few different ones at the moment. And... I also bought one not too long ago, so I like to, you know, mess about with that. And the the other thing I like to do is I like to grow fruit and vegetables. Sounds stupid, but I like to grow my own, eat my own fruit and vegetables. There's just um, it's you know it's it's a rewarding thing to do. So yeah. That, Probably boring stuff, really, but that's that's it. What do you like to do, Fabrice? Well, I have a motorbike, you know it as well, so that's something I have to relax. You know that I have a Quest Three as well. You got a Quest Three? Just, uh, yeah, yeah, I told you already long ago. Oh yeah, do you know what? I forgot you even had that. Have you? Do you go on it? I, I go on mine every day. Which one? I go on my Quest Three every day. Except, obviously, except when I'm in Singapore, I, I I go on it every day. But basically, I now I'm just no, I don't do a lot of things beside uh, archery and uh, beat saber, classic stuff, you know. Yeah, I like my beat saber. It's fun. Just the expert mode is uh, the one uh, i'm stuck for right now i cannot go forward after the expert mode you know yeah there is still one more mode but it's not possible it's getting me crazy i just just cannot but yeah it's good too quick for my mind you have to know the the things by i think uh, yeah it is pretty bonkers but i i also do guitar and you also do guitar you didn't yeah. talk about guitar yeah, I do guitar as well. I don't play it as much as I used to, um, but I do do guitar, and I do like um, I do like songs for people. So, you know, if someone sends me a request on Fiverr to make a song, 
I'll ask them to, you know, give me a couple of sentences and I'll make a song up about it. And people have seen in the chat as well. I've, I've done a, a few, uh, few rap songs with, uh, with viral and also crypto and I've done a couple myself. So yeah, guitar and, uh, music production, I suppose. And now I live in Spain. So I like fiesta as well. What you like to sleep? Like kids. A fiesta, fiesta. No siesta. Oh yeah, siesta. Sorry, sorry. Fiesta yeah. is sleeping. Fiesta yeah. is yeah, yeah, yeah. partying. With my kids. Instead, yeah, all this weekend was a uh, area. So, yes. Big party of uh, one of the village around there. Let's just go with the kids. Enjoy time outside. Drink a couple of beer. And it's like on the go food there and it's perfect there's some of the things that help you relax as well you know okay next one is are all your spouses slash partners supportive of, of your involvement in this project or do they think you're better pursuing other opportunities and means of wealth generation my wife supports absolutely everything that i do um I think what you've got to understand is I've been doing this since 2012 and before that I was in Forex and I was pretty much in the same position. Uh, so I've always done this sort of thing and this is what, you know, has paid for my house, has paid for the, for the life, uh, that, that, you know, me and my wife have got, and. Uh, you know, so she can't, there's, there's no reason for her not to be supportive of what I'm doing. It doesn't matter what project I'm actually working on. Um, she's supportive of everything. And if she wasn't, uh, she wouldn't have let me go to Singapore or any of the other places. And don't forget, I'm taking it to the uh, Czech, Czech Republic next week. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's it. So, that's the sorry gift, you know? Yeah. It's, the sorry, it's the gift that you give when you're sorry. Sorry I left for one week and leave you with the kids. <laughs> but, but, I, I didn't do that. But uh, what I will say again is, you know, in, in crypto, if you're not in it for the long game, you won't survive. And when I first started in crypto, that is something I had to learn very quickly. And the wife knows that as well. I mean, I've, like back in 2017, I, well, I, my team run the biggest ICO in the world at the time. And we did very well from it. So ever since then, uh, there's no questions asked. This is, this is you know something that the wife knows uh is something to work hard at no matter how long it takes or uh and also there's no pressure on me either uh to to bring to bring any money into you know my family or anything like that because because i've already done it so i'm not I'm not stressed about performance or price or or anything. I'm just here because I enjoy what I do and I enjoy working on Raptorium. It's that that's just that's just it. What about you, Baguette? What does your wife say anything? No, she's supportive. Sometimes she would uh, like me to work less in general. I'm just not, not talking about well, Raptorium, but in general. Yeah. But uh, thanks to what I do, we could move to Spain, uh, go to the place we like. And uh, basically, uh, she can, could reduce our work, work uh, get a little more time with the kids and stuff like that because she wanted to. And that's just because I'm doing what I'm doing. And... You know, it's 
let's say about Raptorium or any any other things that you're doing, basically what the space gave you. I mean, you've made it, so it's not an, another dis discussion, but uh, even for uh, someone who wants to, uh, that's still uh, need an income uh, every month, you know, I mean, everyone needs, but in, in my case, uh, supportive of the whole family. Uh, I mean, it's just about how hard you want to do it. If you just want something very hard and if you're resilient, it's going to happen. I mean, eventually, no. Just yeah. have to strive for it. Strive it. Strive every day. For years, if needed. Ten years, if it's needed. No issue. No worries. Just keep doing it. I think um, a lot, a lot of the issues in the space right now is people are traders, right? Whereas we're not, we're not traders. We're builders, and and, and with a trading mindset. Um, you know, people expect uh, results the next day, and that uh, that is not, you know, that's not a feasible way of thinking. If you think like that, and you put your money on the line based on that that way of thinking, you should expect to fail. It's as simple as that. It's you're 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 putting your money on the line based on a gamble. There's no way of doing it. Build and hodl are the best ways to do it. And as Baguette says, we're in it for the long game. And that's what we have learned is the best way to be. So we're not stressed yeah, no. about anything. We're not pushy on getting things done by tomorrow. We are in it for the long game because we know that the road we're on is the one that is correct. And, uh, and it's the one that that's not a gamble because we're doing things that we're sure about if you know what i mean totally so don't don't worry about uh, our wives and our spouse and your our companion or partners or uh, any way you can call it i mean yeah that's probably yeah sometimes maybe they can complain because we are doing too much but that's just all it is and that's just all the passion is i mean when you do something that is a passion to you that you like to do for god's sake yeah sure you can forget time you know <laughs> it's just how it is <laughs> i mean to be fair though fabrice i mean we work from home <laughs> so so it's not as if we have to go out to work as well we're already working when we're home we wake up we're working we go to sleep we're working whatever the only time we're <laughs> not working is when we're asleep so <laughs> The wives can't really complain because we're not going anywhere. It's not as if they don't see see us. You know what I mean? Have you got Have you got a man cave at your new house? No, no, no. no. I, I need that? to to get one. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, the next things I'm going to get is a is a garage first because I'm I'm you know I'm, I'm I've been looking for some days at a little. Indian dark horse chief, you know. Yeah. And I've been looking at it with a lot of intention, you know. I've been very looking at it, and tomorrow I'm going to try it. So, and I don't have any garage to put it, but hmm, I don't care. I will still buy it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's. First thing is getting a garage, and then I will set up. Uh, when I'm uh, I'm buying my my house in Spain soon, I guess around mm -hmm. beginning next year, when I start visiting. And yeah, I will get up something with a garage, and partly in the garage, I may do uh, my man cave. <laughs> you know? Yep. At the yep. same time, but first I need something to cover the new bike which is coming. <laughs> It's pretty soon in that hole, you know. Okay, next question is, are you planning to bring Tether into the network? I mean, yes. Yeah, totally. If Tether want to come on the network, they're literally the most popular asset to be paired with your asset across the world. Of course. Um, although, 
We are also in talks with another decentralized uh, stablecoin provider as well. And uh, I think one of the main driving factors of uh, integration is having the the DeFi side fully circulated. And when I say that, I mean an ecosystem that goes round and round. Uh, so, you know, you've got these other token projects out there with liquidity pools and things like that. And when there's a market for it, that's when the stable coins uh, will be there. And uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, we are talking to stable coins, uh, including one that's a, a decentralized one as well, uh, which is one to one backed. Next one is, how is your continuing partnership with Microsoft working out in helping Raptorium achieve its aims for the future? I mean, it's helping us out with uh, AI integrations, helping us out with uh, business locations, especially when we're talking to uh, people interested in working with us. Uh, it's helping us out with um, uh, deployment of our... Um, sort of team systems in the background as well uh yeah there's there's so many different things on uh that microsoft offer us some of them that we we are using now some of them that we haven't been able to use yet until uh we get to a different stage of a project but yeah you know we've got a decent support from microsoft and uh we're in a position as well uh, for example, like on some of the things that they offer us, once we um, use up uh, the credits that they give us, we can request more and they'll give them to us because we're at the level we're at with, with them. Based on your visit to Token 2049 and your discussions there, how do you gauge Raptorium standing within the crypto space compared with your competitors? And what do you need to improve to make Raptorium stand out? I think... Uh, We've said before we're not we're not we're not compared to that i suppose you could, you could compare us in the stance of oh yes you've got assets and you haven't or whatever that that's a, a way to compare i suppose um but yeah we're we're in a strong position right now to move partnerships forward uh with i would say several top industry players uh in terms of you know rwa storage and also transport as well as traceability and things like that um i think i think uh a lot of the differences um to to some of the established chains out there are literally uh they have taken millions of dollars be it either from a community raise or or from vc now a community raise uh you know if you took 20 million uh it's got its own um its own issues with that uh because uh everything has to um be be, be gone through like a fine tooth comb and then with vcs uh if you're if you're in a position to have a VC, a lot of them require a huge percentage of the coin. So be it a pre-mine, be it um, a, a set of tokens like for token projects. Um, so there's a lot of bending over backwards and slapping your ass if you've, if you've been doing that with a VC. And we are clear of all of that. We've got none of that. And we have, we're in a position now where we've got to a major point in our chain that others haven't even arrived at and they've taken vc money and community money or or both you know we're at that point yep. where we've done it ourselves and we haven't done none of that and that's power that is powerful especially in the space right now and this is why after token 2049 We've got so many contacts that we're talking to because they know the position we're in. They know the hard work that we've put in. They understand uh, the angle that we've taken. Uh, 
and 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 they see opportunity in what we've done at this stage and because we're at this stage now we don't have to bend over backwards for things we could continue building as we are with with you know little funding it would take a, a quite a while or we can or we can take a little tiny bit and do a lot because we've already done most of the hard work uh, so yeah, I think it's a powerful position we're in, and uh... yeah, man, I mean it's it's all, it's also uh, in the way that uh, the, the the revenue and the company was created, you know. So it's uh, it's all very intelligent. It doesn't give any power over the networks. So it's yeah, it's it's not even a big deal to now in the future if now that we are proven. Uh, that we are proven that we are working project that uh, uh, all uh, which is already done with the funding being on uh, funding from the co-founder of the project. So, and it's uh, basically what they say. It's okay, guys, you did it right. Yeah. No one has any leverage over you, and even if someone tomorrow enter at an equity on the company or whatever. What's the leverage beside us choosing who is entering? You know. Yeah, that's the it's, difference. It's totally different. It's totally different. It's nothing like a, a project which is uh, desperately searching for someone to raise money. It's uh, you know, it's it's totally different way of seeing things because if they take you at the beginning, what happens is that nearly. Uh, 50% of your capital would end up as equity, you know, just to get to get your project running. I mean, those guys take millions. Yeah, sure. Take millions. They land the project, but they lost 40% of their company. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so 40% of all the revenue is not for them. It's completely stupid. And uh, the other way around is when when the project is launched, when everything is running, when most of the uh, specificities has been delivered, that you've shown that you can bring quality code and you have a vision, then you can enter someone that fits your vision and not, and beside giving 40%, 40% of your company, uh, when she has very little valuation, you're better giving 10% of your company when she has a better valuation, you know? And that's what Raptorium can do, but this is not because Raptorium can do it that the founders are going to do it. It's just possibility, you know. Thanks, Fabrice. Uh, next question is: I know it's soon after assets release, but roughly how many assets have been created since its release, and does this give you optimism in the viability of the project moving forward? Uh, I think I believe there's like three or four hundred master assets that, that's been created at the moment um we i don't think we've got anything set up yet to see how many sub assets that there are but i know that we've got a tool to uh so you can see what master asset, assets have been created um you know in terms of in terms of what optimism we don't need it we already know that the project has been uh used by you know utilized by builders and businesses already it's just it's just a matter of time you know uh so yeah there's no yeah but i mean uh, th there was someone always a, a project already uh, interesting on building on us you know it's uh it's 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 amazing i mean it's it's amazing to see a project already happy to build on the raptorium chain you know it's i, I think it's amazing you know we are powerful. We are very powerful. Just a matter of time to deliver, deliver stuff that we need to deliver. But we are very powerful, and that has been confirmed in uh, in Singapore. And that we can be sure about it. Absolutely. Did everything during and after assets assets release go according to plan, or were there any teething problems that happened or still exist now? And what if these? If so, uh, I think the assets release uh, itself was fine and hassle three hassle free uh, we had an issue with electromex uh, if i remember and that caused a few issues uh 
both on the Explorer uh, and also on things like Zelcor as well uh, with a few, and a few other wallet providers. But the team quickly fixed it. Uh, we put an update out to say there was an issue with it. By the next day, it was fixed. And, uh, you know, that was that. When you're bringing out something huge uh, in terms of code, you're going to have a few teething problems. Um, but considering how much we tested, uh, you know, there was hardly any. We just had that one. So, so I think it was a success. I mean, I think the only other teething problem is not is such a code thing is uh, a lot of people expected, uh, you know, a lot of price uh, increases and things like that. They were all looking at the markets and everything like that. But I think it was just a bit of a strange time in terms of BTC uh, moving sideways and people quite disappointed with that. And BTC tends to pull outs up or down. Uh, depending on what it's doing um, when we release assets you know out altcoins were literally um, either on the downward or at least moving start sideways so I think uh, sometimes uh, when things are released um, the wind needs to blow in the wind needs to be blowing the right way in terms of a blockchain environment and that there's many factors involved in that including uh, what's going on in the news, what's going on with Bitcoin, uh, who's buying what, what sort of tech's going on in the space, what sort of aspirations and pe things that people are looking forward to uh, in terms of a technical aspect. Uh, so there's all these things. And uh, I think, um, I th personally, I think the, the bull run is yet to happen. We haven't seen what a real bull run is yet. Uh, a lot of people are saying 2025. Uh, so, I mean, Boston's said it, a lot of communities have said it, uh, 2025 is going to be an awesome year, hopefully. Not financial advice, do your own research. I don't know that for a fact <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> but we'll see. On the disclaimer. But, disclaimer. But it'll be a nice year to have because we'll have a bit more of the circle of the ecosystem complete. And uh, the more of that that's complete, uh, the the more uh, the more that people use the network and the more that people realize that what we've built is a lot more secure and rug free than all these terrible asset chains out there that we are shitting on every week. <laughs> One thing that was fun is though when we just finished talking 2049 uh, is that the, one of the exchanges that were the main sponsor of uh, Token to 2049 got act 40 million on EVM chain. Okay, X. No, it was Bing X. Bing oh, X. Bing X, yeah, Bing X. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, they got hacked. 40 million. And, yeah, 40 uh, million. and it was only their EVM. So it was BSC EV and an Ethereum based, you know. So. It just, yep. it just shows you, doesn't it? You know, these smart contracts, exploitable, dodgy code. Why would you want to put your money on the line with something like that? People are losing money all the time, every day. People are getting rugged left, right and center. People are getting their wallets hijacked. Don't use it, guys. Use Raptorium. That won't happen. The next question is on the Talon wallet development currently being undertaken. I see on the discord that the current developer ceased working on the back end. That is social ruins. Uh, he's got a new job, so he hasn't got the time to carry on with it. And uh, there's another developer uh, that we've assigned into that just to take over, to take the reins. Uh, so uh mancini's already said that this won't affect anything we're still on time to i say we obviously i'm in the talent team this is separate to raptorium uh but yes we will release uh <laughs> we will release the talent wallet uh preview and the first iteration to the community on time 
as we've said it doesn't affect anything uh so yeah we've got the new developer in he's already started working on that uh so yeah exciting stuff and uh yeah can't wait to to show you talent wallet it's incredible it's epic nothing more i can say about it forget <laughs> metamask it's all about the talent wallet in your browser i've got it in there right now <laughs> and it works stop teasing us <laughs> yeah I'll show, buddy I'll, paul i'll show you on the stream a little icon that i've got at the top i'll just bring it up slightly oh you see that there guys a little icon there look oh yes that's talent wallet oh yes okay there we go <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah it's it it's good next question is did you attend the singaporean grand prix while you were there for 2049 no no we didn't we weren't there for that no, we, didn't. we were there for uh token 2049 and all the side events and things that were going on yep quite a few actually but the, the best side event is was just a meal at the end of the day. Yeah. At the restaurant. That was the most productive one. What's uh, Chief and Jar saying? I'm too blind. I didn't see the talent icon. Right. I'll show you again. Oh, look. If I click this, <laughs> look what happens. <laughs> look what happens. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right, that's all you're getting. Actually, bit of dark mode. There you go. Oh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, <laughs> I'm not spilling any more Teller wallet. No, you got away. You got away. Okay. Uh, next question. We've only got a few more left. Why do bridge transactions on Zellcore wallets seem to be problematic? And how are you looking to resolve this? Are you considering dropping RTM support for Zellcore in the future? Uh, a lot of this comes back to the Electromex issue that we talked about earlier. Uh, it also comes to Zellcore. Um, I mean, they don't offer any input control uh, like coin control in the core wallet, meaning if you have thousands of rtm uh from one rtm payouts like as if you mine into it or something like that then you'll probably not be able to send more than five to six hundred at a time same as in the core wallet if you can send it out send it back in as one big transaction that will help you out a lot but you know this has been going on for for years now with zalcor what can i say it's just something that happens based on the way that they've constructed the wallet i don't particularly use zelcor not saying it's a bad wallet or a good wallet or what use it if you like don't use it if you don't do you use zelcor forget oh i use stacy a lot forget does like stacy he's got most of his rtm on stacy as far as i understand <laughs> just because you know i'm lazy yeah he's lazy very lazy uh, I'm intrigued and there was some work, so I like using Stacey actually. Yeah, well, you're going to be holding Bart's in it soon when I send you some of those. Based on your talks to Token 2049, what exchanges did you talk to, and are any of these top tier exchanges which would raise the profile of Raptoria moving forward? We're not spilling the beans on any exchanges that we've spoken to. We have spoken to exchanges some of them about asset integrations some of them about listing we're not, we're not spilling the beans on any of that because if we do uh those things don't happen it's, that's the same with most of the top exchanges so that's just the way that is are there any plans to add assets to the stacy wallet on discord we've already mentioned that yes eventually hopefully next month according to tree newen why there is no documentation translated to Spanish and then webs and on the Raptorium website oh, no. in English and French because I translated to French, 
<laughs> it should be in Spanish too, no? Documentation on the website? Is there no Spanish on there? A slim like. I remember doing all the French ones. There was, one German, there was German. But it's different now, Baguette, because Charlie made a new site. Yeah, I know. And you've done that already on that new one. It, it, the translation oh. I made at the time was for the new site. Okay. All right. Well, you got to do Spanish as well. Or we get Alejandro to do it. Um, yeah, better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Come on. Is there a way to see the assets that have already been created? Yes, actually. Charlie created something. Uh, let me grab a link for you. And I'll send that into the... Uh, I'll send that into the chat on the YouTube and also in the Discord. There we go. Okay, there we go. So that, if you use that tool, you can actually see uh, what's been created. And all, you can also search. I think those might be just master assets on that one. He needs to add sub assets to it as well. But, uh, but yeah, you can use that link. And if you don't see the asset on there, you can actually just search for it. Because some of them are not populating on there straight away so yeah just use that link fairly easy to do you can also use it to see the corresponding ipfs file uh that's linked to the asset and it populates next to the next to the field of whatever the asset is so yeah take a look at that okay uh, I, I just i i just i just see so something paul yeah there is an asset name which is called big piggy we fat <laughs> yeah we see in the image of that I think Fostian made that. I think Fostian made it. An amazing one. <laughs> nice one, Fostian. Yeah, I think I think it was him. He's stupid enough to do it. <laughs> <laughs> MA is saying any estimate estimates on when transaction decoupling? Don't know. It's in Boom. development. It's in development. And uh that's just that. Boom. Boom. <laughs> I don't think you should that take that long, really. But we never give dates. We never say when something's going to be done. We just do it. People are asking where Sherm is on the on the streams. Uh, Sherm uh, started a job at Dynex, and part of their uh, part of their thing is that he, he wasn't allowed to uh, be on streams or do a lot of different work for other blockchain projects. So when Sherm started at Dynex, he couldn't, he couldn't be on the streams anymore. Uh, you know, which is fine if he doesn't want to do that anymore. Uh, and he wants to go and work at Dynex. That's, that's up to him. And, uh, can't really say anything against it. It's just, just the way it is. We have come to the end of the AMA. I hope we've answered absolutely everything is in as much depth as you would have liked um it's been really nice to be back here in the office working on raptorium and uh you know working on the next chapter in this in this blockchain as we've said before this is what we really enjoy so we really don't mind coming to do streams every week um charlie as i've as i've said charlie's currently away um you know looking after the kids and stuff like that David's wife is uh, currently heavily pregnant. She's due any day. Uh, so he's taking the reins with the, with the kids and things like that. So David's probably going to be off the streams for a little bit. Uh, but you will see him during the daytimes uh, on the Discord and things like that, working as normal. It's just the time we have our streams. Uh, he's not going to be on for a bit. So it might be me and Baguette. I was thinking of having uh, Mancini on as well to talk about the Talon wallet and things like that. Also, we've got um, obviously the H HNS Hunter uh, working with me on the Raptor Chain reaction and billion dollar ideas. And 
you know talking to a lot of companies about integrating master assets and other things like that so we're doing as much as we can and uh well we're doing more than ever ever really so yeah uh it's nice to see a, a good turnout today on the stream uh we've had a lot of uh a lot of viewers which is is really nice um the uh the twitter's looking good these days as well uh that we started the engage um bot in the in the chat i know foster has been really helping out with that and uh you know we are going to be rewarding people tomorrow I was thinking of changing the stance for taking part in it to make it more of a competition so currently it's divided an equal amount between all the people that participate so we was thinking of doing a bit more top heavy uh to to increase participation maybe if more people get involved then we won't do it that way uh because if there's more people involved then um there's less point in making it as much of a competition because the competition is to get in the top 10 you know what i mean so maybe just for a little bit maybe for next week we might do it like that um in terms of everything else i think uh we know what we need to be doing um from a from a marketing standpoint you may not have seen it or not uh, but we have done a lot of marketing over the last couple of weeks uh i mean i personally have spent quite a lot of money on various things pr and and, and things like that and various tools for the team um so you know I, i've put in as much as i can i'm not a millionaire <laughs> Uh, the project doesn't pay, uh, so I've put in what what I can afford to put in, and maybe one day uh, we'll be able to put millions in into that. So, but yeah, it's been awesome. Uh, thank you guys for watching us. Baget, have you got any final words? No, oh, um, nothing beside. It's an honor to be to work together with a team, and it was an honor to meet you guys and in singapore and i guess we should all feel blessed to have a community as we have uh following us pushing us forward so just stay as you are guys and stay with us because the ride is only beginning so yeah let's see how it goes on you know let's push forward because Absolutely. it's worth it totally worth it yeah we are we are not the same as any other project out there we're doing things differently and we're doing things properly and that's what matters to us okay uh so this is the end of the stream hope you enjoyed it don't forget to follow us at raptorium on x and on instagram and at official raptorium on tiktok we're also well this is the official raptorium youtube stream so give this stream a like as well click the little subscribe button and if you want to help us out you can become a member of the channel there's four different levels and that goes towards helping us with the marketing and other things for the project so it all, go, all goes to a good thing uh is there anything else i need to say no i don't think so no any last words baguette no i don't think so i mean do you want to sing let it go cool do you want to sing let it go for people before you go um, uh, I wouldn't say it's a long way to the top, uh, like a philosopher say, it's a long way to the top if you want to make a blockchain. That's not, it's not exactly the word, but it's a song as well. <laughs> yeah, that's a song, it's not, uh, it's not Frozen, Let It Go. I was disappointed because I know you can sing that so well, Fabrice. So no. well. So well. No, no, I can't. Can I do? Sorry. I'm pretty shy. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, don't forget, I won't be here next week because I'm taking the lady to the Czech Republic. Well, maybe, maybe oh. not. Depends when I get back off the plane. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, onwards Good and upwards. Avant! Bye -bye.